Hello, this is Andrew Klein. Uh, I have a video tutorial today for you on creating and aligning image planes for Maya using Photoshop. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to be using image planes of my cell phone, which uh, I've uh, found actually on the web, uh, related images from the side and front and back. We'll see these here. Uh, it's a G1 phone by Google, and I've got a back view, a front view, uh, a bottom view, a side view, all different photos, all different renderings. But I'm going to put them together so I can try and rebuild this phone inside Maya. So I have a side view here, uh, and uh, this one I'm just going to save out as is, um, and just name this as side and save it as a target. Uh, I'll progress on to the bottom view and um, save this one out of Photoshop as well. This one's just a schematic, but again, it shows what the bottom looks like. It'll be easy to model off of that. I'll save this as a target as well, uh, name this bottom, and when the dialog pops up, I'll choose 32-bit. Here's my front view. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and check my image size on this and check my levels. I, um, I wanna actually make this a little bit less uh, intense by editing the levels a bit, just so that it's not so dark and it's more easy to work on top of. And uh, I'll save this one out. And uh, I'm just gonna call this one front. Save this as a target as well. I also wanna save out uh, this back view. And uh, you'll notice if I go to image size here that my resolution is actually 96 uh, instead of 72 pixels per inch. So I'm gonna change that to 72. Uh, then I'm also gonna adjust the levels on this one as well essentially making this one uh, less uh, intense also, more sort of in a middle gray, and that again will just make it easier to work on top of. So again, I'll save this one out as back. At this point, I'm pretty much done with Photoshop for now, so I can quit out of Photoshop and go into Maya. Uh, here I'm gonna set my project by going to File, Project, Set, and uh, I'm just going to choose the correct folder location and choose set. And then I'm going to go and choose edit current um, and make sure I have folders set up for scenes and images and source images. And this way when I bring my images in, since I saved all of them in the source images folder, when I try and load an image plan as I'm doing here, um, I can come in and it will locate the correct folder. So I've gone into the front camera and uh, you'll notice that uh, I've brought in the front image plan one of the things I want to do is I want to make sure that my working units are in inches here because I've measured my phone. My, my phone is actually 4.5 inches and I want to make sure I'm putting my image planes at roughly the same size. And so I'm going to use a locator under Create Measure Tools Locator to uh, just kind of see what 4.5 inches looks like. And you can see that here, obviously my phone is a little bit uh, too big in terms of how this image is sized. So I've got my attribute editor open and I've got my image plane here in the background. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the image plane and uh, under image plane attributes I'm going to edit these values uh, changing my width and height till I have essentially the correct values. Uh, I'm just going to keep guessing and checking until I have it as close as I can to correct. Part of what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my uh, center values for height and for depth and for position left and right are edited so that uh, essentially I have them correct. And you'll notice now with my phone in place, this pretty much fits the size of the phone and uh, I'll be able to build right to those units. Uh, next up, I'm going to put in the side image. I'm going to try and match the side image to the front image. You notice when I bring this in, it's uh, not only too big, it's also facing the wrong way. I need this phone to be facing to the left to sync up. So I'm going to take this image and I'm going to put it in Photoshop. And once Photoshop opens here, I'm just going to go ahead and flip this horizontally, save this out. And I can quit Photoshop and just reload this image. There we go. 
Now I'm going to continue resizing this, but there's no real way to know what the size of this image should be just yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is once I've got this sort of roughly in place, uh, I'm going to use the locator as a guide since I know the locators fit with the uh, cell phone image that I have for the front. Uh, I can kind of size things to that. I can also use polygon planes as rulers. And here I've made a polygon plane. I'm going to hit Control-D and duplicate that plane and move that up to the top of the phone. And now you can see with these lines on that, uh, my image itself needs to be enlarged just a bit so that it fits with those polygon planes. And I found a value of about 4.7 actually does that, just because my image isn't cropped all the way to the edge. Then I'm going to push this back in the x-axis. I push it back about negative uh, 20 here. And that's going to make sure that when I see it, it's a little bit off. Same thing I did with the front image, just to make sure that uh, I can build my cell phone in sort of clean space in the middle. And I'm going to try to put this at negative 10 instead. Let me just quickly save this. And uh, let's continue on here. I'm going to try and put in the bottom image. Now, I have a top camera, but if I go to predefined bookmarks under view predefined bookmarks, I can set this to bottom. And uh, instead of facing top down, it's going to face bottom up. And now I can import my image, choose that bottom image. And uh, it's huge, uh, but I can continue to resize it down. You can see just how big this is when I go to the respective view. So I'm going to make a polygon plane and rotate it to the side. And since this is the bottom of just sort of the center section of the phone, I'm going to align this polygon plane just to the body of the phone itself. I'm going to ignore that sort of folded out um, screen. And uh, just so I can see this a little bit better here, uh, I can select both of these planes, uh, or I can turn on the wireframe view, which is going to allow me to see them a bit. You can see them here now. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and edit my width and height just so this kind of fits and it's positioned in the middle. Now, everybody's project's gonna have different variables for this because everyone will build their models in a uh, unique space. Everyone will be building different models. Uh, you're not always gonna be building this same cell phone. So the numbers that I'm plugging in here aren't necessarily specific or reusable, but they're general guides relative to each other. And you see here, now this uh, bottom image is sized up and I'm just going to push it down a bit so that again it is out of the way. Let's go ahead and save my scene quickly. Uh, one more image that I want to throw in, I, I want to make sure I can put in a back image and so to do that I'm actually going to create a new back camera by going to panels orthographic choosing new front and then under view, predefined bookmarks, I'm going to set this as a back camera. You can see now my image looks like it's just loading backwards. That's the front image from before. Problem is if I make an object, you see like this sphere here, I can't really see beyond it. My image planes aren't going to be visible there as well. That image plane is blocking the sphere. So if I go into each image plane and choose um, only looking through camera instead of visible in all views, it's going to make sure that all of my other image planes are hidden out. And that's really going to help me making sure that I can get other images loaded in, like this one. To make sure it's positioned in the right spot as well, I'm again going to use polygon planes um, just to size that up. And I'm going to try and size it up with the bottom image. So I'm going to scale that up and position it at one edge, duplicate it, move it over to the other. And since it's hard to see here where those image planes are actually sitting, again, I'll make sure that I'm turning on wireframe on shaded just so I can see those when I deselect them. Obviously here, deselected, you can't really see them all that well. Wireframe on shaded, I turn it on. There you can see it. And once I've got this position in place, pretty much done. I can go ahead and I can take this uh, image plane and uh, again set this to be uh, visible only looking through camera so it's kind of gone in the perspective view and just so you can see all of them lined up here in my um, perspective view I'll change that to be my back camera and name my camera as back and my front view uh, I will set that back as front and that'll complete this so hopefully this has given you a little bit of insight of how you can bring in image planes sync them together uh, and get your model completed from them thank you for more video tutorials please visit kleinmakelearngood.com